this is one of the fastest kayaks I've been on. Let's take a closer look. I'm good. Hey, what's up? Kayak Fishing DIYers, Jeff Little with Torquedo Electric Outboards, and I'm at the in water of the iCast uh, 2022. I have a boat here that is manufactured by one of one of my Torquedo dealers, Innovative Sportsman. It's an inflatable, it's the Osprey 1436. It has three chambers. This outside chamber goes to three PSI, the inner one is about 12, and the, this other outer one is three PSI. What's important about the pounds per square inch or how much air pressure is in the center one is it gives it its rigidity, just like just like walking on a rotomolded boat. Um, this thing gets super tough and super, you know, super rigid, which gives it its speed so that the Torquedo Ultralight 1103 AC can hear this boat at about 6.7, 6.8 miles per hour. So. The other unique thing about this this particular inflatable is that it's fully tracked. Um, this track will be top loading. This is actually my boat, um, but once Trey with Innovative Sportsman has it available for sale at InnovativeSportsman.com, uh, it'll all be top loading track. This was sort of a prototype where he just notched it to be able to put the T-bolts in there, but. We are lic licensing the uh, the track from Yak Attack to be top loading. Once that's out, um, he'll be ready to sell these. I've put the uh, Omega and Omega Pro rod holders on there. I got the transducer on there. The seat is actually on there. Some uh, T rain retractable things there. The foot control steering. Uh, I got a a depth finder on there, all sorts of things. You can rig it however you want because of the um, the top loading track of this frame. It's actually on four sides. It also has the the foot control steering running through there, which is a really smooth steering setup. The tubing actually runs underneath this, on the inside of this track surface in a way that you can still slide a T-bolt in there. So, you, so it doesn't render it yeah, it doesn't block it up. You can keep using this for foot control steering. I know that it goes in about two and a quarter inches of water. Uh, once I get to two and an eighth is where I start running into stuff. You compare that to most rotomolded boats. Most rotomolded boat, well just look at look at the mud line on your boat. And, and I've done a survey on kayakfishingsurveys.com and it ranges between five and nine inches. So when you need this much water in a regular kayak and then you go to needing about that much, that gives you so much freedom for fishing, you know, inshore for redfish and speckled trout, or my home water, the Susquehanna River, for that gets low and clear for smallmouth, or even matted grass areas that, that the largemouth anglers like to go. You can push up and over that matted grass much easier in a inflatable kayak that has a huge footprint. So shallow draft. Stealth is another advantage. When you hit a hit a rock or anything else with a rotomolded boat, it goes boom and spooks all the fish. Um, there's also a hull slap from the wave action hitting hitting the hull. I've seen a lot more fish being in this boat than I have in any other rotomolded boat because I think the acoustics of it is something that um, it, it just doesn't spook fish with that hull slap. So stealth shallow draft and also stability you ever try to drown a beach ball you ever take a beach ball and try to then at the pool and it's it's tough to get it to go down same thing here i'm going to lean on this as much as i can and uh it's just primary stability is is unlike anything else that's excellent yeah so Justin, I'm going to have you hop on this thing and try okay. out that amazing primary stability. I want you to stand in it. I want you to rip around in it and uh, and have some fun. i got to give you a... Uh, a life jacket. Yeah, it's okay. got the kill switch on it. Oh, perfect. That. Okay, give it a little bit of power. So, at low speed, it's going to turn within its own way. Yeah, it's on its own axis. Yeah. It's basically pivoting on you. Yeah. So that's, <laughs> that's really dialing in the foot control steering as much as possible. Now I want you to come off of the light throttle and just flip around and 
this is roof around. <laughs> Look at this thing. So the speeds I was able to reach were around 6.7 to 6.8 miles an hour. A really good pedal kayak, if you're pedaling super hard, will get a speed of around 5 miles an hour. So this thing is way faster than a pedal kayak when you're trying to pedal hard. So excellent stability here. I mean, I, it, it's just, this is an amazing haul. I love it. I mean, I got a $500 mic system sitting here in my pocket, so I have to be a little daring, you know. And I don't have a backup. <laughs> we got a magnetic tether here. So we're going to turn around. And then we're going to pull in. We're going to just hit them at full speed. No, I'm just <laughs> it has double thickness in a couple key areas. Okay. One is the front right here. Okay, double so, thickness. Yeah, it's it's actually people talk about denier in in the durability of these boats, but this actually has double right on the front, but also has it in a, a fairly critical area from here to here. Oh, okay. Justin, why would you think that this is a critical area to have double thickness? So what? what is the, what's the big reason that you found fish that? Fish fins. Oh, so, okay, yeah, so no, that makes sense. Fins, yeah, when you're sure. landing a fish, it, it's from here to here. Okay, it takes a lot, much. but to have this double thickness yeah. wall, it, they are tough. Yeah. And yeah. People think, oh, yeah, yeah, as soon as you get near a, you know. Well, because oysters is the big thing I have by me, and right. oysters are really razor sharp. I'm pulling the kayak up next to the dock. It's bouncing up against it. And uh, oysters actually, even with single wall thickness, didn't do anything. So having double wall thickness increases the confidence right. even more. The so, other thing is on these outside pontoons, uh, it's it's double all the way on the bottom, all the way to the back. Okay, so, so like it's just, rub guard, you know, for dragging, you know, yeah. cross things. Yep. Cool. Very cool. Awesome. Well, yeah, this is fun. I mean, as always, I mean, it's like kind of like I always kind of consider your setups the, like the kayak go karts here at I iCast. Right. You're just kind of like buzzing all around. So it's a lot of fun. I will tell you, if uh, if folks want to get into the inflatable kayak thing and want to rig out, you know, whether it's this innovative sportsman or the, the OBI 11S or any of the Sea Eagle. Sea Eagle makes a lot of really good ones. Yep. Um, yep. NRS, I've used the Star Rivalfish was the first one that I rigged up. Star, yep. That's an awesome boat, yep. but in order to rig it out fully, you got to know a few things about like the Ack Attack switch pads and and how to yep. how to really put frame and and you have to know how to what you're carrying in order to have a an on the water repair kit. Yep. Um, I actually was fishing and filming with Mike Iconelli and he sliced open the side of one of these. Yeah. And and I repaired it and I was back on the water in in 20 minutes. Yeah. yeah. With Terry Type B. It's so, actually, I think, sometimes easier to repair it than a rotomoldy kayak in many regards. I mean, it's just adhesive and it's the material and you uh, end up maybe scuffing up that area to get a good bond or clean it up, you know, the best you can. You put that adhesive on and you slap the patch on and you sometimes you can actually, it, I found it helps too. Um, we've used the, the ratcheting clamps and we put like boards to kind of hold that that patch down a little bit more snug. That's something we found that also works kind of. So I've used the HH66 yeah. and that's good stuff, but yeah. I've also <laughs> really enjoyed using uh, the Aqua Seal, which, which takes longer. Okay. But is a, and honestly for those little fish fin puncture yeah. holes, 
I deflate it fully and I just smear a little bit on there. An Aqua Seal is actually pretty affordable. It's not a crazy high price either, I found. It's um, easy. Because I've used uh, Stabon, which is more expensive. Um, but yeah, Aqua Seal, I've been hearing a lot of good things about. And it's not that expensive of adhesive. I mean, it, it's just simple. Like, inflatables are, are awesome. And I actually haven't had to repair many. Um, and it kind of actually shocks me. I'm kind of waiting for when I do have to. So I've, so. I've put them through the paces yeah, in the last get, year and a half, and I beat the snot out of them. Yeah, and, yeah. and I've kind of chronicled the lessons that I've learned with yeah. inflatables on the YouTube channel. And yeah. it, there's a there's a playlist called Inflatable Kayaks on my YouTube channel. Yeah, yeah we ran them over with trucks even. Right? Yeah. <laughs> that was like the ultimate kind of shock and awe thing, grab people's attention. We're like, hey, you can run it over with a truck. Wouldn't recommend it, but you can do it. Right. <laughs> So, yeah, awesome. Well, thank you for letting me try this. this is so hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, smash that like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the notification so you can follow us on the next one. I hope you give inflatables a chance because I thoroughly enjoy all of my inflatable crafts that I have. And that's what this video was kind of about, was to hopefully instill some confidence and show you what they can do.